Okay, I was observing with the Teleview Ethos 21, uh, one of the most expensive eyepieces in the market. And then I thought, let me compare it with the, as a joke, with the, one of the cheapest eyepieces you can get. They usually come free with any telescope. This is a 25 millimeter plus hole. Uh, there is no brand name or anything, it's just probably they sell them in buckets, bucket loads. And the same details I can see in this, <laughs> there is not much different. The only thing is that field of view a little bit narrower, of course, but the same details can be seen. And no difficulty at all. I tried with the RKE also, RKE is the one of the best actually. I tried with the Celestron Ultima series 32mm. Uh, um, in this uh, category, um, uh, Teleview Panoptic 24mm 68 degrees was one of the worst because it was not any better than the 32mm Celestron Ultima series uh, puzzle. <laughs> and uh, yeah, surprise. I'm going now to try a, a Celestron Omni 40mm just to see how it is for a joke. <laughs> Omni 40mm um, eyepiece. Uh, I prefer the 25mm unbranded uh, eyepiece with this. Uh, you can see the M32 on one corner and M110 in the other corner barely fitting all. But the field of view in the other one was better. 25mm fossil <laughs> unbranded. You buy it in buckets. <laughs> that was better. This is good, I'm not, don't take me wrong, it is good, but in this big target, which is M31, that's, that's better. Okay, this is about a 32mm puzzle, and uh, again, I say that I prefer that 25mm <laughs> uh, uh, unbranded bucket load bout um, puzzle. Uh, yeah, nice, even all of the one nice. I've tested this in the refractor, that was the best, best in the refractor. Uh, I mean a 60mm vintage refractor. I think it was a Cypentex I tried it, anyway. Okay, I'm using this 25mm puzzle, which is unbranded, I don't know where it is made. <laughs> it's just a rubbish eyepiece that we even don't look at it. I can see the same details in F M57 as I did with the uh, Ethos 21 millimeter, 100 degree eyepiece. The price of this is not even eight pound, and that uh, Ethos 21 is 800 pounds. Now they have increased the price. <laughs> yeah, it actually has a little bit more magnification, as if it looks a bit bigger, and relatively easy. You know, both of them relatively easy to find this. Uh, I uh, which one I prefer? I prefer this one, to be honest. <laughs> I can put it in my pocket, go anywhere. <laughs> oh, let me bring this. This is such a joke. <laughs> yeah, I'm using the 32mm, by the way. Uh, um, Skywatcher 32mm, Skyliner. Sorry, Skywatcher 12-inch uh, um, Skyliner Flex Tube. With a plus or 25 millimeter. I cannot believe it. This telescope uh, is 12 inch. That's on here. And this eyepiece is 100 times cheaper than the uh, um, Teleview Ethos 21. And yet, the view it gives of the M57 is better. <laughs> I can see a lot of stars. <laughs> also, you can see the central uh, donut of the M57 planetary nebula. And uh, of course, you cannot see the central star with this. That's magnitude 15. So you need really a very dark night to see that and high, higher magnification. But yeah, this is fun. <laughs> oh, I should make a video about this actually. Um, Teleview Ethos against the. Uh, uh, 24, 25 mm plus hole. Again, I'm looking with the Teleview Ethos 21 mm, and uh, just after 
the plus-all 25mm which you buy it in bucket loads and it's really dirty I was not keeping it even with the cap or anything <laughs> it wasn't the drawer I, pick, I prefer this one this, this one is easier to see there is bigger first of all a little bit more magnification it has this one has peripheral when you use this and then look with this peripheral uh, direction of it is it starts a little bit elongated with this one you don't have such a thing at all <laughs> it's very correct <laughs> eight pound i guess eight hundred pound i think probably it is 80 80 penny so that's in 1000 times the price difference I don't know, this uh, Ethos probably has 8, 7 elements. This one probably has the most 4 elements. Quite light. Okay, if you want to go to a space, for example, with the Apollo 11, which one your engineers will let you to take? 1 kilo, <laughs> 1.2 kilo high <laughs> piece, uh, or this plus of 25 millimeter high <laughs> piece, which is, I don't think even this is 150 grams, it's probably around. 50, 52 grams. <laughs> I think they, that would go to the Apollo program. <laughs> and Nagler says that he, he started the idea by the Apollo program. I don't think they would let his uh, ideas to take in there. This, we don't know even though it's verified or not. He just says something. <laughs> can make up things. Nobody can, you know, disprove him. Nobody talked about that other than him. This, this eyepiece easily can go in any in any you know space program is lightweight is again like the pencil and the pen americans you know bamboozled a lot of money and the <laughs> and the inventing a pen to his work in space and the russians just took a pencil <laughs> and the same uh, americans built a bigger rocket and chose the best astronauts but they were very big and heavy and tall and the russians went just best made the best spacecraft uh, sorry rocket but they choose the little pilots that could easily you know increase the payload scientific payload <laughs> come on look at this too it's a joke <laughs> this is this is equal to this and even probably has an edge over it look at the rubber eye guard <laughs> and like <laughs> I don't know what, what you say, but I think this puzzle is better than your, your eye piece. <laughs> you should really make it. <laughs> you should make only puzzles. Don't, don't make this kind of eye pieces. They're not any better than this. <laughs> so I'm back to the 25mm <laughs> puzzle. And I'm, I'm telling you, most of the discoveries in the field of uh, astronomy were made with the uh, Huygenian uh, eyepieces and uh, the other one, Ramsden, even cheaper than that, simpler than that. They have just two lenses. Uh, you put them concave, con uh, flat, opposite each other or the other way around, and that makes eyepiece. And most of the discoveries in the history of astronomy were done by that. <laughs> we are really becoming, you know, like Christmas being, you know, commercialized. Astronomy is also not being commercialized. Everything, the more oh, 200 degrees eyepiece. The, the sex work scientific has made 120 millimeter uh, degrees eyepiece. 25 millimeter. Uh, cannot be any better than this. <laughs> ask, ask someone. For sure. Yeah, the problem is not that uh, 100 field of view, degrees field of view, I cannot see it. I can see it, I can, you know, enjoy it. I was just watching before this, I was watching following the Jupiter in the 100 degree and 110 degree eyepieces. Um, I have several, you know, APM, Myriad, Sky watching Myriad, or I was using also the um, ETHOS, Teleview ETHOS. But I found the best view actually for Jupiter and such things uh, was the Pentax XW. I've not tried these puzzles or puzzles on that, but I may do it one night. But this, I don't have any difficulty. That's what I mean. I don't have difficulty grasping the whole field of view with the 
100 degree eye pieces. I can easily turn my eye around and see the whole field of view, every corner. I enjoy it, but come on, <laughs> this, this, this does give you the same view, <laughs> concentrating on the center. <laughs> Actually, the shape of the ring of the M57 is better in this one. With the ethers, you see it, then sometimes you don't see complete ring and donut shape. With this one, you always see the donut shape of it. That's amazing. Uh -huh. Okay, I've now changed the target. I'm looking at the star Mirak in the... Uh, constellation Andromeda and the ghost of Mirak is visible and I can say that it falls actually into better focus with this one and uh, because it's a ref uh, reflector you can see beautiful spikes around the star the Mirak itself then the that means I can very, easy, very nicely focus on it and then the ghost of Mirak that galaxy NGC 404 or something like that is very visible easy easy Oh, I love this fossil. Okay, the only thing is that I prefer um, the view in the Nagel there, 31 millimeter, to this one on the Andromeda Galaxy. It's a very big object. You can see the whole thing with that eyepiece. But this one is a little bit difficult to see all of the eyepiece, uh, all of the M31 from one end to the other end. Which is really extended, what you see is just a core of the Andromeda Galaxy. Which can be dazzling, you know, in this one even dazzling. Uh, very nice. I'm using my cheap uh, eyepiece on the double cluster. The tightness, the focus of the thing is all equal to what you could see in the uh, Ethos uh, 21mm, 100 degree eyepiece. This is, I think, is possible, so it must could not be more than 52 degrees field of view. With this you can see um, Al Langler talks about the majesty factor. Majesty factor that he, man he mentions uh, uh, it comes at a very high cost because you have to use a power core with the ethers to bring everything to focus if you are using a low <coughs> F number telescope like this. But with this one you don't have that problem because practically you, what you will see is that edge to edge is clear the stars are tight and uh, dot shape and yeah beautiful and i can see those old asterisms that i mentioned in the previous uh, video and uh, does the ethos 21 worth it i can see all of that here also the same beauty to make it as if that uh, i mean when you go to forums like this uh, i don't name them anyway this in british one species they make it as if that without those eyepieces you cannot see anything. You can see everything practically. Nothing can stop you. These eyepieces are excellent. Now with my uh, comedy uh, plus or 25 minutes eyepiece, I can see I'm looking at the uh, the star Albero. The multiple star, double star. I can see the green-blue uh, um, component of that star system and also the um, yellow-orange component also. Beautiful. And I can say the view is very similar. Same level of clarity as with the um, Teleview Ethos 21mm <laughs> I don't see any difference to be honest They are They are, they are equal 